I think we can all agree that an itch you just can't scratch is one of the worst feelings around. Whether it's because you're in the middle of something like pouring another cup of coffee, or because you just can't, that nagging, itchy feeling sure has a way to get under your skin. Which makes me wonder, how would you scratch an itch if you were stuck in an airtight suit with hours before you could take it off? Could you? And if not, how do people like astronauts stay sane? You know, I've got a minute while I wait for a fresh pot to brew. So, let's explore a quick case that's out of this world. Space is cool, but it's not exactly the most hospitable place for us. Without air or atmosphere, being in space without some kind of protection is what I like to call a bad time. Now I know TV and movies make it seem like space is just a cold place. Well, I've run the numbers and it might surprise you, it's worse. It's, it's so much worse. According to Canadian astronaut and outer space musician Chris Hadfield, while the International Space Station is kept at a pleasant room temperature, or around 73 degrees Fahrenheit, experiencing the vacuum of space would be horrible. Outside the protective walls, the temperature can reach about 240 degrees Fahrenheit in the sun, and around negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit in the shade. That's without getting into the fun side effects, like having your lungs getting sucked flat. Well, there's another reason to never sleep again. So, what are the options for someone wanting to travel outside without experiencing all those unpleasantries? Well, unless we can learn how to be like Bean and acclimate to the weather and lack of things to breathe, which seems unlikely, we'll have to put on some protective clothing. Which is where spacesuits come in. There are a few kinds of spacesuits around, but there's a good chance the one you're most familiar with is the EMU. No, not the bird. The extravehicular mobility unit, also known as that white spacesuit you've seen in pictures, TV shows, and movies. And while it may look like just a heavy-duty cloth suit, there's a lot more going on underneath than you might think at first glance. Because of the inhospitable environment in the final frontier, every spacesuit must contain all the necessities to keep the astronauts inside safe and secure. Proper air and pressure are a must, as exposing the pressurized human body to a vacuum doesn't turn out well. There needs to be that pressurized environment to keep everything in its proper place. Air is a much more self-explanatory need. You try holding your breath for a full workday and see how that goes. Actually, on second thought, no, don't do that. It'd be like if I went three hours without coffee. But there are other considerations a spacesuit needs to pay attention to as well, like sweat, temperature, visibility, and going to the washroom, to name a few. The EMU covers all of these with equipment that's layered underneath the iconic suit, starting with what's known as a maximum absorbency garment, better known here on Earth as a diaper. Then comes sweat, something you don't want building up in an enclosed suit under zero gravity. To combat this, astronauts wear a cotton long sleeve shirt and long johns that absorb any sweat the astronaut may build up during the hard work that goes into a spacewalk. Over those is the liquid cooling ventilation garment, a liquid cool jumpsuit that runs cold water through tubes woven over the body to prevent overheating. For air pressure, the spacesuit has a life support system that connects to the suit and keeps it inflated, for lack of a better word. In the old days, this system used to be on the spacecraft, connected to the suit by a tube, which was later moved into the backpack as of the Apollo missions. As for having visibility, being able to see where you're going and what you're working on can be kind of important when on the outside of the ISS, so keeping vision clear is what we would call a big deal. In order to keep an astronaut's vision clear, the interior of a spacesuit's visor is treated with antifogger, and the spacesuit itself is equipped with a visor to help filter sunlight, and a sunshield to avoid direct sunlight. And on top of it all are layers of insulation for warmth in the cold and the iconic reflective white surface to keep it cool in the heat. Add on to that a cap with a built-in microphone so astronauts can chat with both the station and Houston, and sealed compartments for the upper and lower body, hands, and head that buttons up to keep everything together and airtight. It's important that all of these functions are properly maintained, and not just for the obvious reasons. In July 2013, Italian astronaut Luca Parmitano felt something that most of us dread, something cold on the back of his neck. Houston, we have a problem. But unlike most of us, Parmitano was sealed in a spacesuit, and it wasn't some kind of monster, but a water leak. To describe how dangerous this was, imagine if your room was slowly filling with water. And now imagine that instead of filling your room, the water floated around and stuck to anything it touched, like your computer, your desk, your face, things like that. Well, that was Parmitano's situation. His water cooling system had sprung a leak, flooding his helmet as water stuck to his face and visor, simultaneously blinding and drowning him. 
Thankfully, Parmitano was able to return to the airlock over the course of a few harrowing minutes and escape in time. But it was a close call that illustrated the dangers of when spacesuits don't work as intended. So, what happens if you get an itch partway through a spacewalk? Well, to quote retired NASA astronaut Clayton Anderson, you shake, rattle, and roll, baby. No. According to Clayton, when there's an itch on an astronaut's body, it's the only thing they can do without the use of their hands. But between the liquid cooling system, bulky equipment, and the stiff suit itself, there's usually something that astronauts can wiggle their body against to scratch an itch. Hmm, sounds kind of like a bear. The celly to control. Am feeling itch. Wishing we had good scratching tree like back home. Over. Ha <laughs> ha, funny Vasily, like a bear uses, right? Control here, mission is compromised. Bear alert, bear alert. Huh, I get a bit weird when I don't have coffee. <clears throat> but what about those pesky nose itches? On that front, astronauts have a few options, starting with their microphones, which astronauts can rub their noses against in order to relieve the itch. Though this can move the microphone out of position and lower sound quality, I'm sure it doesn't sound great for anyone on the other side either. Another potential solution can be found in something called the Valsalva device. This is a small foam block with an adhesive backing that is attached to the inside of a spacesuit's helmet for what is known in the biz as the Valsalva maneuver. The Valsalva maneuver is a fancy term that refers to the process of exhaling against a closed airway, otherwise known as trying to exhale from your ears by closing your mouth and pinching your nose shut to equalize pressure in your ears. You might be familiar with this process as that thing you do when there's pressure behind your ears while swimming underwater or flying high up in an airplane. Since astronauts don't have their hands free, they need something to use to get rid of any discomfort from the pressure in the ears. And since it's already conveniently available to the nose, it's also just in the right spot to scratch any facial itches. Though if it's already been used, it does carry the risk of smearing snot on the astronaut's face. Gross. But don't worry, the Valsalva device is swapped out every time someone goes on a spacewalk. These suits are shared after all. And then, there's a more high-tech solution, so versatile it can be found in all walks of life. Attached to the interior of the helmet using state-of-the-art adhesives, Velcro! Attaching a piece of Velcro strategically would give astronauts a convenient scratching post to use for any facial itches that might come up. But if none of those are available, what's left? Well, as inconvenient as it sounds, ignore it. Spacewalks aren't for leisure. There's a lot of work that goes into them. Whether that's working on science experiments, testing equipment, or doing repairs, and with so much work, there's a lot to keep an astronaut's mind occupied away from the itch. How do astronauts scratch itches? Well, between using the suit, their microphones, the Valsalva device, and Velcro, they've got a few options while in their spacesuits. Personally, I think it's nice to know there's at least some comfort to be found inside a spacesuit, even if they're not the most comfortable thing in the world to wear. But that is a topic for another day. For now, I'll stick to being thankful I can scratch my nose whenever I want, even if that means having to drink my coffee in regular old gravity. Well, speaking of which, 